Hi everyone, I am standing right here in San Francisco. Just wanted to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. Resource Global has grown so much in the last couple of years. It's because of people like you. Thank you so much for all that you continue to do. Thank you for all your support all of these years. Look at this beautiful tree. And when I think of Jesus, when I think of the birth of Jesus and what how God's grace is upon us, I think of all the things that how God has used you to really be able to bless and encourage. On behalf of the Resource Global family, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi everyone, my name is Ami Lee. I recently joined Resource Global as Chief Strategy Officer. I'm so happy I get to wish all of you a Merry Christmas from where I live, the sunny Cal uh, Southern California here. I know it doesn't look like it, but believe it or not, Advent is right around the corner. Um, and Advent is actually my favorite season of the year. I love the season because of the reminder it offers me that our God is not a distant God, but he loves us so much and he demonstrated his love for us by coming in flesh and dwelling among us. So my prayer for all of you is that as you gather with your loved ones and celebrate the birth of our Savior, that you would be filled with the knowledge that God loves you so much and that from that joy and peace that God grants you, that you would extend um, just his blessing to others around you. Again, um, I hope you have a wonderful Advent, a Merry Christmas, and a great 2022. Blessings. Welcome, this is Renewal Church, and we're a team here, and we just want to share with you guys uh, one of our favorite Christmas carols. We hope you guys enjoy it. So let's go. Are you guys ready? Yep. 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 Joseph and I serve as the communications specialist for Resource Global, a family tradition my family and I celebrate as we bake 100 to 200 cakes around the time of Christmas and exchange it with other families in India. So towards the end of Christmas, you end up with other people's cakes and get to eat it and enjoy and have a great time. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Kamau and I have the pleasure and the honor of serving on the board here at Resource Global. During the day, I work as a data scientist and also teach college part-time. One of the Christmas traditions that I look forward to each year is getting together with friends and family and attending an event here at our church in Chicago called Lessons and Carols. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit more special this year with us being able to gather together under the same roof, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, I just wanna take this time to thank you for all you do to support Resource Global and to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello and Merry Christmas. My name is Trisha Felice and I am part of the Resource Global Board and I live in Chicago, Illinois. And I'd love to share a little bit with you about my family and our Christmas traditions. I come from a large Italian family. Most of everyone lives in Ohio, so I will be going there for Christmas. And we celebrate Christmas and the birth of our Savior with a large party. It's one of the main times we all get to see each other. And we celebrate with a lot of food, a lot of gifts, and games. 
And I'd also love to share with you um, a little silly song that we love. It's an Italian Christmas song. And it's a silly one called Dominic the Donkey, which is um, one of Santa's little friends in this song. I have a short video I'm going to show you uh, that I filmed a few years back when we all sang the song together at the end of the night while we're playing cards. It's a very uh, fun and dear time and I hope you enjoy it and I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Bye. Sasha says it's made in Brooklyn. Oh, jingity jing, ee haw, ee haw. It's Dominic the donkey. Jingity jing, ee haw, ee haw. The Italian Christmas donkey. La la la, la 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 la. The choir anthem that I chose is called Grace Carol, subtitled jo Joseph, See the Holy Child. There are four stanzas. I'll read one and then make a couple of comments for meditation. Joseph, see the holy child, born to Mary, mother mild. Call him Jesus, Adam's son. Now in Christ our God has come. Call him brother, close of kin, human nature without sin. Born to us a fallen race, God incarnate gift of grace. So we, in this first stanza, uh, hear about Jesus taking on humanity, born of a virgin. Son of Adam is an interesting title. Of course, in theology, we call Jesus the second Adam, uh, God come to earth. And then he's addressed as our brother, our God, uh, our savior, uh, totally human, but without Sin, Of course, that's God's reconciliation plan from us, the fallen race, uh, who can do nothing on our own to get close to God, to actually provide a way to be reconciled. What a great start. Second stanza, shepherds run to Bethlehem, see the babe outside the inn. Shepherd in the manger lies, born to comfort all your sighs. Unto you the Savior lives, for his sheep his life he gives. Born to save our wandering race, Jesus leads us by his grace. So the carol shifts to that first Christmas and the shepherds. Uh, what is this thing that has come to pass, as the scripture says? The promise of a savior. He came for his sheep, uh, men both ways, uh, obviously, with the shepherds standing by as they're tending their sheep. And of course, Jesus, the great shepherd who shepherds uh, us. By his grace, no mention uh, of our own efforts, our own merits. We can't attain earthly or heavenly salvation on our own. It is totally of God and God's grace. What a great reminder. Third stanza, eastern kings your glory bring, royal treasure for the king. King of all the son is given, destined for the throne of heaven. Raised on high, the Christ will reign. Conquer sin and death and pain. Born to govern Adam's race, Jesus rules the king of grace. So we hear in this stanza how Jesus was royalty, and yet he was born in a manger. Um, <clears throat> you know, he heading back to heaven was his ultimate goal. So, we reestablish in this stanza how he conquered sin, death, and pain. Jesus will come and make all things new when he returns, all things restored to the way they were intended to begin with. The nearness uh, of our Savior uh, when Christ will come back. Uh, what, what a great, once again, reminder of God's grace. And the final stanza, Jesus, brother, shepherd, king, Christians, let your voices ring. God made flesh the living word, king of kings and mighty Lord, faithful shepherd, David's son, Christ Messiah, holy one, born to save his chosen race. Jesus gives us grace on grace. So the promise of our response, we, we, we can call him Jesus, brother, savior, king, doesn't all of that cause your heart to stir and you want to let your voice ring, as the carol says, in praise to this Holy One? God made flesh, and then we hear a bunch of titles for Jesus, all in this one stanza. Living Word, King of Kings, Mighty Lord, 
faithful shepherd, David's son, Christ, Messiah, Holy One. What a great set of names that does, in fact, um, uh, to tell who this God-man is, although it falls short because there are well over 100 names in Scripture given to God. But we see how he was born to die one more time, uh, born to save his chosen race. We are his chosen people, those of us who believe in him. And the carol concludes as its name, Grace Carol says, Jesus gives us grace on grace. I pray that this uh, Christmas season will be one of renewal and celebration. God bless. My name is Noah Chung, and I have been with Resource Global for about seven to eight years now, and I work primarily in the areas of strategy, programming, and impact, uh, supporting the global cities um, within the core operations. One of the traditions that we have on Christmas Day is we actually invite a lot of our friends and uh, church members in on Christmas Day. You don't have anywhere to go during the Christmas holidays because um, we don't have much family around. And so my wife and two kids, we have a few friends and uh, community members over and just have a nice Christmas brunch, open up presents, and watch some Christmas movies. And that's something that we've done for the past few years, and we've really enjoyed it. Um, and so that's something that we like to do, um, and we're based out of Chicago. And just wanted to wish you all also a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hey there, this is Elmer Ha, board member for Resource Global, coming to you live from Portland, Oregon. Just want to wish to all of you who are watching this video a very happy and Merry Christmas. We've been through a lot this year and last year, and so as we tune into the season coming up and, and celebration of the birth of our Savior, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and hope that you get some time to reflect and uh, wishing you a Happy New Year as well. Um, my name is Reagan and I'm seven years old and what I like about Christmas is that I can spend time with my family and that we get to have time with each other and give gifts to each other. My name is Peyton and I'm five and my favorite thing about Christmas is that I get to f spend time with my family and I get to um, open presents with my family, and I get to spend time with my do dogs. Kenzie. Hey. Mom. What's your name? He also growls. I'm Kenzie. You're Kenzie. I'm my kitty. You like to spend time with your kitty? Kenzie, how old are you? Two. Two? And what do you like about Christmas? I like Christmas music. You like Christmas music? Reagan, can you tell us why do we celebrate Christmas? Because it's Jesus' mom, and it was the day that he was born. Kenzie, why do we celebrate Christmas? Um, tell me something. Yeah, you tell me something. Um, I like naps. You like naps? Peyton, why do we celebrate Christmas? <sighs> to give thanks to God. I mean, to 
celebrate Jesus Jesus his birthday and to give thanks to him that he died on the cross to um save our sins and um And so, because it was Jesus' birthday on the first Christmas, and um, he was born on the first Christmas. Good job. Do you guys want to say Merry Christmas to everybody? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi, everyone. My name is Donna Choi. I'm a project manager for Research Global. Uh, A tradition that my family used to do was having a dessert contest each year during Christmas. Uh, It was from making any type of dessert that you wanted to uh, putting fruit in it and so forth. And uh, we just had um, we had judges and everything, the whole shebang. So uh, that's something that we used to do. And uh, and unfortunately, I never won. But it's okay because we all enjoy having time to spending time together. So I just want to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Greetings. Welcome from Resource Global Austin ATX. My name is Pete Inman and it has been an honor to serve as the founding city director for Resource Global ATX. And we wish you Christmas blessings in this 2021. So let's get down to business. I love one for Christmas. Food that's delicious. We want my favorite dishes. Family to come visit. My home is explicit. We decked out and check out. Rituals religious. Ooh, that view? Yeah, let's mix it. It's skewed. So let's just remix it. All I want for Christmas. Lord is your spirit. Ability to hear you. All truth, no theory. Wanna talk to you and hear back like Siri. I wanna see you. Ever so clearly, whatever I be, I desire you near me. Lord, I wanna speak with clean lips, sincerely. Psalm 133, unity when I'm where my peers be. Moving in faith, keep me far from where the fear be. Cause all I want, all I want, all I want is you. I know what it is. Let's get down to business. business. All I want for Christmas. Christmas. Demolish with my family. Everything up off my wish list. Yeah. Man, I sound so selfish. And Christmas about being selfless. Thank God he sent us Christ so we might see a true perspective. Yes, I was living like a peasant. Jesus made me a descendant. Yeah. He throws the flowers in the field and he's even feeding the pheasant. <laughs> His spirit's so refreshing. Yeah. I treasure presence over presence. I want to be an extension of heaven. Bringing attention to the king who needs no mention. But Jesus is his name though. In this season he's the reason that we celebrate so. You can say happy holiday, still means holy day, bro When God stepped into the earth to wash our sins away, so oh. So Father, all I want is your heart for Christmas So I could do my part, use my art to witness To reach those who are lost, to reach those who are far To reach those who are scarred, to meet the king with scar Jesus Christmas, Mas Christ. Don't forget the reason for the season. Hello, Resource Global. My name is Pamela Gifford, and I serve as the Director of Communications based here in Chicago. And I'm with my lovely daughter, Olivia, who is 10, and husband Pete is filming. And we wanted to just wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, share some traditions. I think the the most that we do um, in the season is light a fire behind us uh, in this room, decorate the tree. And just love to be together, um, cooking, just hanging out, visiting with friends, things like that. Um, We got out our Christmas sweaters because one of the fun things to do in Chicago is to go to sleep on Christmas Eve and then hope for a white Christmas on Christmas morning. So we'll see what happens this year. We wanted to share this tradition. Um, This is an Advent calendar. This is our favorite tradition. 
And every day you find the number and you read the little book um, and it tells the story of Christmas. And Olivia has been reading this since she's been very little or even before she could read and would just look at the pictures. Um, but what's uh, amazing for us is it just tells the story of that incredible night, the impossible night that shouldn't have happened. The world closed its doors um, there was no room at the inn. Uh, all the odds were against Mary and Joseph. And yet, throughout all those difficulties and the challenges of the world, God came uh, to be among us. And it's a wonderful story that we celebrate with you uh, all around the world every year. And so we just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas uh, from the Gifford family to yours. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi, everyone. I'm Abraham, and this is Jenny. We're from Jakarta, Indonesia. So things that we like doing over Christmas is I like to visit my grandma for Christmas. And we both really enjoy playing Secret Santa with Jenny's family, typically every Christmas. So we're really looking forward to that this year. And we wish you guys Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, Resource Global family, you have blessed me in ways that uh, you're not aware of. And I just want to wish you a merry, merry Christmas as we pause to celebrate the birth of our Savior in this wonderful time of the year. I hope you're reminded of the grace of God through you and how God is using you to impact the world and inspire others. Merry Christmas to you, and let's make it a time in which we're really giving for the Savior. Hello from sunny Singapore. My name is Sharon, and I am the City Director for Resource Global Singapore. Here's to wishing you and your loved ones a blessed Christmas filled with feasts for the tummy as well as your hearts. God bless you all. Greetings. My name is Julia Mulligan, and we live in Chicago, Illinois, and I serve as a board member for Resource Global. And it has just been a blessing to see how God has had his hand in the work of Resource Global in the last four years. And we're expectant for what he is going to continue to do in the Resource Global family. Today, I'd like to share with you just a couple of traditions that our family does here in Chicago to celebrate Christmas. The first one is the Advent wreath. And we have a wreath that we put on our dining room table that has four candles. And each Sunday in Advent, we light one of the candles and they stand for something different. The first one is hope, the second one is peace, the third one is joy, and the fourth one is love because Jesus is love and he is our savior and we celebrate that at Christmas. And we do that at our dining room table on each of the four Sundays in Advent. Another thing that we do during the month of December is a Jesse tree. And we have a big fabric tree which has 25 ornaments. And the Jesse tree tells the story of how Jesus the Savior came from Jesse who had his son King David all the way to the birth of Jesus our Savior. And each day in December, our children open up one of the ornaments and we read a Bible verse that tells the story for that ornament and shows the complete lineage to the birth of our Savior. And these traditions help us to celebrate and be more like Jesus. And we pray that that would be something that all of us in the Resource Global family would do is just get to know and be more like Jesus in spreading his love. And so now we'd like to send greetings to all of you. And I'd like to ask my daughter, Ella, who is 11 years old, and my daughter, Mava, who is eight years old, and we're going to sing you the greeting of, We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Cheers. Hi, Resource Global family. My name is Emily Geyer. And I get the privilege of working with our staff here at Resource Global. On behalf of my family and I, we wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. One of the traditions that we actually do around the holidays is bake sausage balls with my family. Um, it's a super fun event that we do to prepare for Christmas morning um, and something we always look forward to. So wishing you blessings in the new year and a wonderful holiday season. Hi, I'm Colin Lambert, Director of Radio Products at Resource Global and host of Missions Today. And I'm so glad to take a couple of minutes to share with you a couple of my traditions 
uh, related to Christmas. I'm here in my studio in Austin, Texas, have a picture of last year's tree on my desktop. I love looking at that this time of year. I love Christmas. I certainly love being with family, love opening presents. There's a couple of traditions, though, that we've incorporated in our family through the years, and I want to share those with you. Being in Texas, we're around a lot of Mexican food, Tex-Mex, and we're also foodies. We love to eat. And part of our tradition around Christmas is Christmas Eve dinner, tamales. My family used to go down to Green and White Grocery down on the east side of town. It's not open anymore, but for years you could go there, get fresh made tamales. You'd stand in line for hours just to get them and you'd bring them home and boy, it was a tamale feast on Christmas Eve. That was always such a fond memory. And even to this day, we have tamales on Christmas Eve, one of my favorite things to do. And then Christmas morning, of course, we open gifts, but one of the traditions we started as a family when I got married with my wife and kids was to read the Christmas story before we open any presents. And we rotate every Every year with who reads the story, something we love to do to take a moment and reflect on the true meaning of Christmas, Christ and his birth before we get into opening presents and sharing those with each other. Those are just a couple of traditions that we celebrate at our home. I just want to say a Merry Christmas to you wherever you are. I hope it is a joyous time, and I hope together with my family that we can gather together around Christmas and focus on the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of Christ, our Savior and Lord. Merry Christmas from the Lambert family in Austin, Texas. Yeah, I know. So when you ask me that question about what's so unique and about Christmas in Singapore, I'm thinking like, oh, you know, actually, the most unique thing is, and I think the Singapore government just spends lots of money lighting up the entire shopping district uh, in Singapore, which is about a, maybe a three-mile track, and, and there are lights running across the street, and buildings along the street actually dress up their buildings, they even have a competition with the best dress-up, you know, best decorations, and I think this really brings up the festive mood and people go down, take photos, they enjoy. Uh, we don't have snow here, but it's still cooler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no snow, but every year there's a new theme. And do you and your family go there every single Christmas? Oh, yeah. It, it just lifts your spirit and you just suddenly into that mood of uh, like, it, you know, it's Christmas time. <laughs> Dear cohort members, uh, friends, supporters and colleagues, and all our partners around the world. Greetings uh, from Chicago on behalf of Resource Global. Just wanting to wish you all a Merry Christmas as you head home or hit the road uh, this season. Uh, thank you for your support and we praise God for all the work he is doing and will continue to do uh, through all the work that uh, we are together involved in. And here's a very short uh, Christmas carol to send you on your way. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore. Him, Christ the Lord. Hello, my name is Maddie. And I'm Grace, and we are from... Indonesia. So we are here to just wish you a Merry Christmas. Selamat Natal dan Tahun Baru kepada seluruh keluarga Resource Global di Indonesia. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, my name is Mary Potter. I am the Director of Regional Partnerships for the Chicagoland area with Resource Global and uh, wanted to tell you about one of our family's Christmas traditions. Um, every year we get a real Christmas tree, but we don't just go to Home Depot or the store and pick one out. We I'm come here to a Christmas tree farm and we cut it down. Um, the kids and my husband and I hop on a tractor or hayride and take our saw with us and go out and chop down a Christmas tree and then um, bring it home. There's usually hot cocoa and a fire at the farm afterwards, but it's a super fun tradition. A little bit more work than going to the store, but a really fun way to make memories and celebrate the Christmas season. Merry Christmas, Resource Global Family. We are the Odd Family, and we are singing a song to share with you in celebration of the birth of our Savior, Jesus.
Hi there, everyone. I'm Keith Getty, and we are wishing you a happy Irish Christmas. The Christmas story is one that is told to all of us in songs. The history of celebrating Christmas over the last 2,000 years has often been one where the songs have been able to tell the story of the culture, even when music and dance were banned, even when the Bible was banned, even when Christianity was banned in culture. Songs have been able to bring the message of Christmas to all of us. And I hope this year, as you fill your homes with songs and as you go around, that the songs of Christmas told throughout the history will be resonant in your mind and refreshing your soul. I was reading this morning, Come the long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us. Let our find our rest in thee. All the people at that time who were longing, longing for the Messiah, longing for that feeling of rest and couldn't help thinking about our culture with all the dysfunction of the last two years that we've lived with. May this Christmas be a time that each of you can find something of the rest of Christ. Amen. Merry Christmas to each one of you from Chicago, Illinois. One of the favorite traditions that I had growing up, my entire family would memorize Luke 2, and the night before Christmas, we would quote it together as a family. To me, it's a sweet tradition that still continues this day, and it's a great reminder of why we celebrate Christmas, the birth of Jesus, our Savior. May you have a sweet time celebrating the birth of Jesus this year. Hey, everyone. Merry Christmas. As we experience the miracle of Christmas, it's not, as so many would people would say, oh, gathering with friends and family. Um, Christmas is the experience of God so deeply and sacrificially loving the world that he enters into it in the person of Jesus Christ, right? The one who created the universe by the power of his word um, is reduced to an inarticulate cry. The one who, with a mighty arm and outstretched hand, rescued Israel from Egypt suddenly can't even control his own arms and legs and has to be swaddled. Um, the one on whom all of the universe depends to be uh, for its sustaining and continuing is reduced to the body of a helpless infant that's reliant on its mother's milk and its father's care to survive another day. That is the real miracle, miracle of Christmas. And that's the invitation that I think Jesus invites us to now to so deeply love the world that he loves that we sacrificially enter into it, laying aside um, all of the privilege and all of the um, opportunity that we have into service of God so that the people around us experience the goodness of God's blessing and the depths of his holy love and turn to him. And the beauty of what we do together is that we do this in every sphere of life. Um, we're going to do this in our neighborhoods and in our families. We're going to do it in our workplaces and in the places that we study. Um, we're going to do it not just by proclaiming the good news in word, but by um, doing the work that God called us to do to his glory in ways that serve the people that we work with and the places um, that our workplaces touch so that the whole world experiences the glory of Jesus Christ who's entered the world this Christmas. Friends, Christmas blessings to you. May you once again be awed and startled and humbled by God's great, God's great act of sacrifice on our behalf and then impelled in all the work that you do to demonstrate that same sacrificial love to the world that needs to know Jesus Christ has come. Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Catherine Leary Alsdorf, and I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I love looking forward to Christmas. My favorite thing is Christmas caroling. As a kid, my mom played the piano and we sang around the piano. And then when we got older, we sang in the caroled in the neighborhood. And there's even a caroling group that comes to our big high rise apartment in New York City. So um, I hope you all get the chance to do some Christmas caroling yourselves. Merry Christmas. Hey, everyone. Tony Chen here. I'm a board member and friend of Resource Global, hailing from Chicago. I'm also a partner at Vernon Frontiers, where we're building and investing in businesses across Africa. I just wanted to extend my warm greetings to you and your family in this Christmas season. Merry Christmas. Christmas in Gemma. Sandanja, quite love. Hey, my name is Kent. Uh, I've been with Resource Global since the beginning. I think that was, what, 2011? 
and uh, it's just a joy to be able to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. Um, we are just so grateful for the partnership that we have with folks all over the world, and we are definitely looking forward to what God has in store for us uh, for the rest of this year and next year as well. Um, I know that I've been speaking with Tommy. We're looking forward to seeing all of you around the world, and so hopefully we'll be able to connect physically instead of just over uh, Zoom and online. But uh, yeah, so enjoy this season and this time with your family, and we hope to catch all of you soon. Take care. Well, hello, Resource Global family. My name is Laura Ehrman. I'm our, our Director of Events and Outreach, and I live in the Chicago area. You know, many neighborhoods in our area celebrate Christmas by lining the sidewalks with luminaries. And each Christmas Eve on our way home from church, we drive through the streets that are lined with these lights. They're made of very commonplace items like simple paper bags or even old plastic milk jugs that would normally be bound for the recycling bin. But um, with that single candle placed inside each one, the cumulative effect is breathtaking. The simple lights break apart the darkness of what would usually be a very shadowy dark street. And like the beautiful light that emanates from the simplicity of a homemade luminary, God put on our humble flesh and entered our very broken story to redeem us. And so I hope this Christmas you have many opportunities to reflect on the word who became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And if you do happen to find a street that's lined with luminaries, I hope you'll take a moment to enjoy the view and that they will remind you of the light that is still shining in the darkness. Merry Christmas. Hello and Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, I think a Christmas tradition uh, in the Taiwanese culture, in the Taiwanese church culture that I grew up in, uh, was that every Christmas Eve we would have a potluck dinner. So uh, a lot of our Christmas celebrations and traditions revolve around food. Uh, we would have a potluck dinner and I just remember um, different families from our church bringing the best Chinese dishes to uh, our, our uh, church dining area and us just sharing in this wonderful meal together. Uh, families being with one another in community, celebrating Christmas as a church together. Just such a, a great tradition around food and community. Uh, as an individual family right now, uh, my family tradition around Christmas is that uh, in the morning, uh, we open presents together, uh, but before we do that, we have a meal. So uh, when the kids wake up in the morning, they know that they cannot open their presents until we have our family breakfast together. So we gather around, we have breakfast together, and then uh, we open Christmas gifts uh, together as a family after the meal. Uh, so there you go, uh, family and food. All right, well, Merry Christmas to you all. Hi, I'm Ann Liu. I'm a designer at Resource Global um, in Chicago. Just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Hello, I'm Jesse. I'm Sarah. I'm Justice. I'm Stephen. And we are wishing you a Merry Christmas from Resource Global in Kuala Lumpur. We just really want to um, thank you for your support and encouragement and joining with us this year. And um, we just know that we can love others because he first loved us. And so in Malay, we would say, Salamat Hari Nato. In Chinese, we would say, Shandan Jia Kwai La. Shandan Jia Kwai La. Let's say it in English. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. God bless you all. Hi, I'm Wayne Peterson speaking to you from Naples, Florida, where it's warm and balmy. I have the honor of serving on the board of directors for Resource Global. I didn't always live in warm weather. In fact, I was raised on a dairy farm in northern Minnesota where the weather is cold and the snow is deep. Being a, a kid on a dairy farm, we spent a lot of time working with the animals in our barn. Not unlike the place where Jesus was born. He was born poor. He was born in a barn with the animals. Paul the Apostle writes later about this. Jesus who was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. 
And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. God humbled himself to be born poor, to be born in a barn, to come in the form of a crying infant in the cold weather in Israel. But he did this for us. The Bible says he became poor that we might become rich. And what's happened that God has highly exalted Jesus so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. It's a message for the whole world. Jesus became poor that we might become rich. Merry Christmas to you and uh, God's very strong presence and joy be in your life as you celebrate his birth and his life. God bless. Hi, everybody. Hi. We just want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This time of the year has always been special for us as a family. We have my wife's birthday. We have my daughter Karina's birthday. And of course, we have our Lord's birthday. And so we try as a family to spend as much time as we can together. We normally take a holiday so that, uh, you know, we are far away from our every, every day's routine. Yes. And hopefully that we this year we will have a family reunion and our daughter who is in Singapore can join us. And I'm really blessed that my two sons are with us at this moment in Jakarta. This time of the year too, I've always been asked to preach on either the year's end message or the New Year's message. And so what I do is I'll reflect upon the last year, you know, the, what has happened. I will think about how I can be a better steward and the lessons learned, of course. And uh, most of all is as I reflect upon the things that happened, my heart is always filled with thanksgiving and with joy because we have such a faithful God that even though when I'm not faithful, when I'm fickle, God is still faithful. Truly, truly. And this is what we want for our family. So at the end of the year, we always reflect on the whole year, lessons learned, and we share with one another. And so I just hope that, you know, with this sharing, our family will grow stronger and more intimate with God. And then from there, we're able to set goals for next year and seeking after the Lord what we should be doing with our giftings, our calling and how God has ordained us in our work. We'd like to encourage you, too, to reflect upon the year. And in the process, we hope that you will also be filled with joy and gratitude and thanksgiving for the, our, the wonderful God that we have. So once again, we'd like to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. May God bless you. See you, everybody. Hello, and Merry Christmas from Jackson and Donna. Merry Christmas, everybody. We just came back from an appropriately socially distanced and masked Christmas Eve service, and it was a really joy to be able to be there, even with the small numbers that were allowed to be there. Um, but an interesting thing happened. A few minutes into the message, the call to prayer went off from the mosque next door. A really interesting juxtaposition as we realize we've gone about our day today and the rest of the population, this is just another day as tomorrow will be. It was a sobering moment, um, but a good reminder too of why we're here. So we wanted to take a minute. We're really glad that we have the chance to um, share something with you that kind of ties where we are with what you're celebrating today and tomorrow. And we just thought it might be of interest to you. So thanks a lot. How did we go from understanding Christmas to being this, to Christmas becoming this? Most of you know we're now living in Turkey, in this beautiful city circled in red. But just two and a half hours away is the city of Mira, which is the home of Santa Claus, the home of St. Nick. I kid you not, one of the most fascinating things. St. Nicholas was a real person. He was the bishop of Mira. St. Nicholas is the patron saint of sailors, repentant thieves, prostitutes, brewers, pawnbrokers, and children. He was born into a wealthy family. His parents died, leaving him a great deal of wealth. He became a pastor, and then he sought to use his money to bless other people. As a bishop, he attended the first church council of Nicaea, where the Nicene Creed was written. 
Nicholas was a fiery defender of the church, especially during the great persecution, which began in 303 AD. It was the most severe of the Roman emperor's persecutions, and it was launched under the emperor Diocletian. He proclaimed edicts prohibiting Christians from meeting together. Bibles were burnt in public. All subjects were ordered to sacrifice to Roman gods. According to estimates of modern historians, between 2,500 to 3,500 followers of Jesus were killed in the persecution. Because Nicholas refused to worship the Romans' gods, he was imprisoned for five years. Nicholas died on December 6, 343 AD, and was buried in the church that bears his name, the picture which you see right now. There's a famous story about Nicholas that is behind his reputation as a gift giver. There was a father who was very poor, and he had three daughters. The oldest daughter was of the age of being married, but she needed a dowry. Without a dowry, no one would marry her. A dowry was money that you gave to the groom, and it was used to help the family start off in a good way. Because the man was so poor, if the daughter didn't get married, he was going to have to turn her into servitude, where she would live with another family and serve them and not have the opportunity to raise her own family. On the night before she was to go into servitude, someone came and dropped a bag of gold in their house. When they woke up the next morning and they saw the bag of gold and they counted it, they realized it was enough for them to live on for the next several weeks, as well as enough money for the dowry. The same thing happened for the second daughter when she became of marrying age. Now, when the third daughter became of marrying age and she was about to go into servitude as well because the man was still poor and was not able to support his daughters, The father slept downstairs for several days, waiting to see if the same person would come back and drop a bag of gold into the house. And sure enough, in the middle of the night, he hears a clunk and he gets up and sees it's another bag of gold. So he runs out of the house and he runs into Nicholas and he confronts Nicholas in the best of way. Is this you? Is this what you've done? And Nicholas says, yes, I'm the one that's been giving you money. He says, but I need you to promise you will not share this with anybody else. Nicholas continued a practice of helping others through his generosity in secret, but good news like this doesn't stay quiet. St. Nicholas is celebrated in a traditional church on December 6, the day of his death. 200 years after his death, Nicholas was already considered to be a saint. By Renaissance period, St. Nicholas was the most popular saint in Europe. Between 1200 to 1500, St. Nicholas was the unchallenged bringer of gifts in the toast of celebration centered around his feast day, December 6. Holland especially delighted in St. Nicholas. The name Santa Claus evolved from Nicholas's Dutch nickname, Sinterklaas, a shortened form of Sint Nicholas. In Holland, you can see from this picture that the tradition of Nicholas having been a bishop is maintained through the red color. The bishop's hat is called a mitre, the use of the bishop's staff and the crosses on the garments. The Dutch brought the story of Santa Claus with them to New Amsterdam, what we know of now as New York, New York, in 1773. And we begin to see the development of who we understand Santa Claus to be and to look like today. In 1822, Clement Clark Moore, an author and a professor, wrote a Christmas poem for his three daughters called A Visit from St. Nicholas. We now know it as "'Twas the night before Christmas." This poem is largely responsible for our modern image of Santa Claus. He flew from house to house in a sleigh led by eight reindeer, came down the chimney, left presents for children, and had a bit of a weight problem. In 1863, Thomas Nash drew Santa Claus red, white, and blue and made him a supporter of the North in the Civil War. Then again, in 1881, Nash drew a picture of Santa Claus that is much closer to our understanding of Santa Claus today. Then Coca-Cola got a hold of the image starting in 1920, and the rest, shall we say, is history. The giving of gifts is part, for many of us, of our Christmas tradition. God's generosity through the gospel of grace was so real to Nicholas that he sought to live generously toward others as God had lived generously toward him. God gave to Nicholas what Nicholas could never have given to himself. Christmas is a reminder of God's ongoing generosity to us. 
He gives us the gift of a son in all that that means. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. He gave as a gift to us. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. Even the very faith that we have to believe is a part of God's gift to us. God's generosity is proven to us through the miracle of Christmas, God coming to us as a man. That man, Jesus, living a life we could not live to die a death that we should have died to be raised from the dead as our hope and promise of what's to come. As you continue the tradition of St. Nicholas and giving gifts, remember the greatest gift we have as you look at the baby in the manger, as this baby will grow up to be the Savior who comes to us as the gift of forgiveness and of life. So from our family to your family, Merry Christmas. Well, everyone, you got a chance to listen in on all of our different city directors from different parts of the world. You got a chance to hear from some of our global speakers from all over the world sharing about Christmas celebrations in their country, in their culture, but some of their favorite Christmas stories as well, too. You got to hear some of our individuals who shared their talents through song. All of that just to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for all that you do, not only this year, but for many in the last so many years, in the last 10 years, you've been with us. So on behalf of myself and my family and the entire Resource Global family, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2022.